five weirdest self-experiments. Number five, Stubbins Firth. Dr. Firth shows that some research needs not only guts, but grueling dedication and a strong stomach. To prove that yellow fever was not contagious, Stubbins poured vomit from a yellow fever patient on cuts on his arms. Then he poured it on his eyes, then in his mouth, ingesting straight from the patient. Then he moved on to other fluids. He never got sick, but he proved something that turned out to be false. Yellow fever is contagious, but only through blood. Number four, John Hunter. John Hunter believed that gonorrhea turned into syphilis. John Hunter was wrong. John Hunter never actually knew he was wrong because when he tested his theory by smearing pus infected with gonorrhea on his penis, the pus came from a patient who also had syphilis. The resulting debacle delayed his marriage for years. That's right, delayed, not ended. So all the credit in this case goes to his wife. She was the only one who really tried something risky. Number three, Lazaro Spallanzani. Not all experiments involve testing one spectacularly risky thing. Some are meant to illustrate a process. One process, digestion, was examined by Lazaro Spallanzani in the 1700s. Spallanzani sealed up his food in little bags of linen, swallowed the bags and then recovered them at various stages of the digestive process. By examining the bags as contents after one, two or three hours in his stomach, he could see how food was broken down. Number two, Evan O'Neill Kane. On the 15th of February, 1921, as the American surgeon Evan O'Neill Kane lay on a table in a hospital waiting to have his appendix removed, he decided to conduct an impromptu experiment to find out whether it would be possible to remove his own appendix. Kane propped himself up with pillows in order to get a good view of his abdomen. He injected cocaine and adrenaline into his abdominal wall, and then he swiftly cut through the superficial tissue, found the swollen appendix, and excised it. He later explained that he did so to know how a patient feels when being operated upon, and to understand better how to use local anesthesia to best advantage. Number one, Giovanni Battista Grassi. In 1878, Giovanni Battista Grassi was conducting an autopsy when he found the large intestine of the corpse to be riddled with tapeworm and their eggs. Grassi immediately realized he could ingest some of the eggs and prove it was possible to infect oneself with tapeworms in this way. In order to conduct his experiment, Grassi first fished the eggs out of the intestines to determine that he wasn't already infected and placed them in a solution of moist excrement to keep them alive indefinitely. Then in 1879, when he felt confident he was free of worms, he spooned 100 of the eggs out of their fecal home and swallowed them down. A month later, Grassi experienced intestinal discomfort and then found tapeworm eggs in his stool. His experiment was a success.